Hello friends and welcome. Today we're going to continue on with where we left with our last video of kind of looking at the whole rise of the Antichrist and the Great Dragon and how that coincides with martyrdom toward the end of the year with a conjunction with Venus. Uh, the markets are continuing to rebound as we expected. There was a bit of a dip yesterday, but overall there were pretty big gains with the stock market. Now, that's I think telling us with that dip in the morning, don't get comfortable. These things are still coming. Uh, there will continue to be an overall downward trend. What I also wanted to share with you was a verse that I received this morning, and it's going to tie along with the end times. Um, some people are not going to choose martyrdom. They're not strong enough. Uh, and we see that in the book of Daniel chapter 11. Uh, I'm going to start with verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits or great things. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity and by spoil many days. Okay, There is nothing new under the sun. These things happened uh, around the time of Jesus, after he was crucified, these are things that could have happened beforehand uh, in other times of tribulation, similar to what we see in the book of the Maccabees. Uh, let's continue. Verse 34. Now when they shall fall, they shall be hopen or helped with a little help. But many shall cleave to them with flatteries, and some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white even to the time of the end because it is yet for a time appointed all right uh, verse 36 and the king shall do according to his will and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished for that, that is determined, shall be done. Now, I want to read this uh, portion of this in the NIV, just because that's the Bible that I have. That's what I looked to this morning. Uh, so these verses in particular, starting with verse 33, those who are wise will instruct many, though for a time they will fall by the sword or be burned or captured or plundered. When they fall... They will receive a little help, and many who are not sincere will join them. Some of the wise will stumble, so that they may be refined, purified, and made spotless until the time of the end, for it will still come at the appointed time. So what stuck out to me when I was reading it this morning was this word here, spotless. Now we see in Revelation 15, let me get that pulled up for you. It talks about the song of Moses down here in verse, let's see, three. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy way, thy ways, thou king of saints. So the song of Moses is Deuteronomy 32. We've got it right here. We're going to look particularly at verse 5. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. All right, keep that word spot in mind. We're going to jump over next to Revelation 5. And there, what do we see? Revelation 5. Let's just do it this way. So it will talk about the spotless lamb who is worthy 
to open the seals. So none of us is spotless, none. We have all, you know, throughout history, even when we look in Revelation, I believe it's chapter two with Pergamum, they had a white stone that allowed them to do business. It allowed them to go into these uh, games full of debauchery uh, in their stadiums. So this isn't something that any of us on our own will can attain. So as many of you know, it really, really gets my goat. It burns my butter when I hear people on other channels, you know, just condemning people to hell. When we know, you know, just from the scripture, Revelation 14, 9 says that they have to be actively worshiping the beast, worshiping his image and have taken his mark in order to qualify for that judgment. Um, and what it tells me is that they don't understand the great white throne judgment as we see in Revelation 20, verse 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God and the books were opened and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So it's not their work singular or a deed as some translations put it. They were judged according to their deeds. It's their whole life. This is what the criteria is. The great white throne judgment that will happen after the millennium, millennium rule and reign of Christ. Um, this is where it is determined whether or not they will be cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So when I think of people who are just telling people that they're going to go to hell for what, you know, whatever reason, some, you know, because they don't know anybody any better, but others because they are purposely, they know that they're, you know, doing evil. They're Wiccans, they're mediums, they're whatever. They are masquerading, just as we saw in Daniel 11, there will be some who come in with flatteries and corrupt people. They know what they're doing. And in fact, a friend told me that, and he's not saved, he does not like God, he does not like the concept, he says God abandoned us, he holds more to the Gnostic sort of teachings, not agnostic where they just don't know but gnostic secret religion secret society sort of concepts um but he had a dream where he was taking people to safety and it was in a city it, it may have been here in columbus ohio but he was taking them with another person and once they got to their you know destination they found that it had already been secured um, but within a, a short amount of, of time, he saw one of the people at this secured location begin to somehow abuse or accost one of the people, members that he had been, he had just rescued. So there was already division. And so it came into their minds that, hey, maybe this hasn't been secured. Uh, maybe there is something else going on here. So this is really a time for people to realize you can't trust people just because they're in leadership. You've got to have your connection with the source every day. Get in the Bible, make sure that it is secure, that your foundation is secure in Jesus Christ. Um, because, you know, for me, we've got the parable of the prodigal son from Luke 15, 11 through 32. That still applies. People think that they're just going to throw out the whole Bible based on a few verses from Revelation 14 taken out of context. Revelation 14, that is a rapture passage. This whole chapter is about the great harvest. These are rapture, Christ. These are warnings. 
you know, Babylon has fallen and I haven't had time to go over that yet, but we do have that over here in our timeline could very well happen later this year. Fall of Babylon or an alternative date. The sun will go into conjunction with this asteroid Babylon, January 2024. There could be a double application. Some people, you know, think that Babylon is New York, and that could very well be one way to interpret that. Um, I hold to that mystery Babylon is truly a mystery, just like Mike from the, around the world said a couple weeks ago, that it's not going to be obvious. Well, what organization has all sorts of mysteries? Well, Rome. They have, you know, their tentacles, if you will, all over the world. Even in Arizona, they've got the Lucifer telescope. I mean, this isn't a joke. This is an organization that has always been in control in one way or another. They work with those entities that hold that control. Now, it's still a divided house, and a divided house will not stand. But the point is, is that we've got to make sure that our connection, our salvation is secure because we continue going to the Lord. Uh, Revelation 16, verse 15, tells us about keeping our garments when it says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Okay, it doesn't say keeps his garments white as snow. Just make sure that you have those garments on. Otherwise, you're on the other side. So basically, the way that I see people who are, you know, condemning people to hell is similar to what we see in Matthew 24. Um, when it says, uh, verse 44, therefore, be ye also ready. For in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household? Give to them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Uh, jumping down, uh, verse 47, Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and he shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And I find it remarkable that verse 49 talks about, you know, there some sort of a congregation. He starts to eat and drink with the drunken, other people who are under the same delusion. I mean, do we not, as I said previously, do we just throw out the whole parable of the prodigal son or just the entire Bible? I mean, so, so be prayerful of these things. Again, um, the original passage was from Daniel 11. Uh, now let's go ahead and do as is our normal custom and open the Bible. Or please show us great and amazing things in your word in Jesus name. And we are taken to Zechariah. I've got quite a few un passages underlined here, uh, starting with verse or chapter six. And I think we may have gone over this passage recently. Those who are far away will come and help to build the temple of the Lord. And you will know that the Lord Almighty has sent me to you. This will happen if you diligently obey the Lord your God. Uh, chapter 7, verse 9. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Administer true judge, justice. Show mercy and compassion to one another. Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless, the alien or the poor. In your hearts, do not think evil of each other. I mean, what did Jesus say the greatest commandments were? To love your God and to love each other. To be wise as serpents, innocent as doves. Chapter 8, verse 2. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I am very jealous for Zion. 
I am burning with jealousy for her. And that's so true. We saw, I think last week in the book of Isaiah, God was like, I will never, I will never forsake all of my people, Israel. I will never, ever do that. Jumping down to verse six, this is what the Lord Almighty says. It may seem marvelous to the remnant of this people at that time, but will it seem marvelous to me? And jumping on to verse 12, the seed will grow well. The vine will yield its fruit. The ground will produce its crops and the heavens will drop their dew. I will give all these things as an inheritance to the remnant of this people. As you have been an object of cursing among the nations, O Judah and Israel, so will I save you and you will be a blessing. Do not be afraid, but let your hands be strong. And we've seen God's provision. We have seen his mercy. I mean, when we look at the judgments that should be manifesting now, the second horseman, I believe that if Taiwan had not been praying, if the people of Taiwan, if the people of the world had not been praying, yeah, I think that China would have already invaded. But just like we saw with Sennacherib, I think in a previous video, he got word from, you know, another territory that they needed help. So his attention was diverted to that territory. China's attention has been diverted to the Middle East, according to Stephen Benoon on Israeli News Live, because Iran keeps saying that they are going to bomb Israel. Well, China and Israel are in cahoots as well. I mean, there's so much going on right now. Um, but I really want people to remember. I mean, I don't mean to sell hopium here, but God truly is in control. He is doing marvelous things. And I think the, the prophecy, one that I recently heard from uh, Carrie Ann Giddon, was that Australia may be next on the list of territories or countries that will be invaded this time by Russia. And I thought, well, what did Australia do? But if you think about it, the New World Order has been using Australia, using New Zealand as sorts of guinea pigs. And this may be a very abrupt takeover with, you know, troops coming in to implement this new world order. They've already given their guns up. This may be a way to test the whole world to see if this, you know, red horseman uh, can, and I, I want to be careful with my words here because it's not truly the red horseman doing it, but are, are our prayers going to keep these judgments at bay? So the red horseman as we see in Revelation 12, is Michael, the archangel. And we see him in Daniel as being a fighter, a warrior. Um, but are our prayers going to be stronger than these judgments? And I pray that they are. Keep fasting and praying. Please, please do that. Um, so why don't we take a look at the stars? Um, as I said earlier with our time chart, it does look like October is going to be about the time that we see the 10 day tribulation. And previously we, we looked at May um, and, and that's not impossible. However, the sun will be in conjunction with Venus. And as we are seeing with the markets, as Mercury gets closer to the sun, uh, things start moving, things start happening. Those judgments strengthen. So that's what I'm thinking even though we've got a 10-day pause here in corona australia so the southern crown i uh, i think with that conjunction with the sun and venus this one in may may be a warning and then we will see its fulfillment in october unless you know god is showing mercy mercy and keeping that at bay uh i know uh Troy Black has had a prophecy about Russia not really doing much movement until the spring. Um, and I think that that's probably going to be the case. And then uh, 
Dana Coverstone said that for the America, you know, for America, we should be safe pretty much until September or so. And that's what I'm seeing as well. There will be some natural judgments, definitely. Uh, if we back up a little bit here on our timeline, we see that the fourth seal is going to be strengthened. So as we said in our last video, expect to see, you know, a lot of news stories in the media of people's deaths, celebrity death, and then we will see a conjunction with Neptune uh, in March, middle of March, with the opening of the sixth seal. The seventh seal, that's going to bring a period of silence for a half hour, as we see in Revelation 7, or excuse me, Revelation 8. And then there's going to be the censer thrown down. Let me go ahead and get this pulled up. Revelation 8, the censer is going to be thrown to the earth. And that altar is representative of Ara, the altar constellation and the sun. I'll show you in a second here. The sun will go into conjunction with it in, I believe it's December. All right. So heading over to stellarium-web.org. We're going to turn on our filters, turn off some filters. Let's go ahead and go into full screen mode and bring the sun up. Comes the sun. Da -da -da -da. Okay, so right now we're getting very close to Saturn. We do have some Mercury from distant uh, from. <laughs> we have some distance from Mercury. And then here comes that moon, our sorrowful, comforting moon. So it could be even sooner. I mean, the sun isn't quite in conjunction with Saturn when the moon shows up. But I think most of us have friends um, or family members um, who have passed um, or who know of people. I was listening to a lady at work and she said three of her closest friends had passed in the last two weeks. Um, so this is happening. This is happening. She was in her 70s or so, um, but it, it's going to continue. It's going to affect all of us. And that gonna, that's going to happen early February. Continuing on, I just want to make sure I've got Neptune in focus here. It doesn't always pop up. All right. So we're going to look for the sun coming into Neptune. We've got Jupiter, the white horseman nearby, and we're still waiting to see how the horsemen interact with each other. But again, as we said earlier, mid early to mid-March, we will see the effects of the sixth seal. Now, if you had a chance to watch the video that I had linked in our last video uh, from channel Planet 7X, uh, with Gil Brazard, you would have seen this picture. And I just want to, Planet 7X is the channel that we're looking at. I'm going to put this in full screen. So our timeline coincides very nicely with what Gil Brazard also has. Uh, we do differ a little bit with... Um, I believe the trumpets, the sounding of the trumpets uh, that I just covered with uh, the constellation Ara. But he is predicting an arrival date of planet X to be around middle of April. So pretty close in timing uh, this spring. Both of us are looking at this spring. Uh, I believe it may be in another slide, but he mentions the three days of darkness occurring at this time. So do be ready, you know, with supplies, with candles, um, and anything you can think of. Again, any sort of repairs, anything to cover your windows, um, just to keep any unholy presence out of your home. 
and then continuing on and again i mean it could very well be april uh we have seen with the previous seals that there was a calling out first and then there was the actual activity and it was gradual god has been very merciful in these judgments that they have been relatively gradual and if we look back at that video let me put this back up we do see that he has a meteor storm uh early february here so just be prepared be prepared all right so continuing on here we're going to bring the sun back into focus actually let's take a look at venus our martyr planet just because i think it's very important to understand okay we're going into conjunction here with jupiter the first horseman in the church so that could mean you know late april the other side of passover there could be a judgment going on here um we've got the sun and moon in conjunction in aries this you know the spotless lamb that was slain and as we've said previously um this comet that goes by the spotless lamb and into draco after going through the feet of perseus which we had a wonderful comment thank you uh on our last video about you know jesus or the bible saying that a lot of times you know the serpent will be under the woman's heel they will crush the head of the serpent so thank you for that dear um right into the feet of perseus before heading on to draco the dragon over here all right looking back at venus as we continue let's get it pulled up here so venus will not go into conjunction with the sun again until late september and kind of hang out there for a little bit let me see uh while this is happening we've got the great red dragon comet coming into constellation of the beast here being slain uh, and that may as we've said herald the 10 days of tribulation that are spoken of in chapter 2 of the book of revelation with the church of sardis is it sardis smyrna is the church of smyrna just to give some context there if anybody wants to pause that so these are very telling and revealing times very scary i would say uh, nobody wants to encounter martyrdom but this could very well be the case toward the end of the year and then afterward the opening of the fifth seal let's take a look over here let me fix this real quick so what we've got is the i believe this is going to be the likely 10-day tribulation now will it start on that exact day or are these just warnings um it's hard to tell it's hard to tell but this could very well indicate the timeline that we're looking for here jumping back over here to stellarium and and all this does happen with venus being in the scales of libra and they're you know indicating some sort of judgment going on and then afterwards this great red dragon comet is going to go into aura the constellation of the altar interesting okay and then we have the sun going over this constellation as well uh telling me that perhaps this is when we can can expect to see the seventh trumpet excuse me 
with the seventh seal, we see that there is silence in heaven, uh, chapter one of chapter eight, verse one. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels, which stood before God and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it, with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar, and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and earth and an earthquake. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. And as we have mentioned in previous videos, Matthew 24 does speak of uh, verse 27, For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So if we don't see that with the sixth seal, um, as in verse 29, it says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So in this passage, we have the lightning, we have the trumpet, which could be an indicator that the trumpet judgments are opening but here's the thing that we sometimes forget where it says immediately after the tribulation of those days and wheresoever the carcasses there will the eagles be gathered together so here one moment excuse me here in march we have the opening of the sixth seal I have the sixth seal continued over here. I'll get to that in a second. That is going to be from Amos. So we're looking at a possible um, instances from or incidences from the sixth seal mid-March. And then jumping down here, we are looking at the lightning and the trumpets um, after the period of silence for the seventh seal all the way down here in December. So it could very well be after the tribulation of these days here with the strengthening of the fifth seal. Well, I mean, we'll have to see once we get there. Uh, over here from the book of Amos, I do realize that we're getting short on time. Here we have Amos chapter five. We're going to jump down here to verse 4 and on for thus saith the lord unto the house of israel seek ye me and ye shall live but seek not bethel nor enter gilgal and pass not into beersheba for gilgal shall surely go into captivity and bethel shall come to naught seek the lord and ye shall live lest ye break out lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph and devour it, and there be none to quench it in Bethel. Ye who turn judgment to wormwood and leave off righteousness in the earth, seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion, and turneth the shadow of death into morning, and maketh the day dark with night that calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. So a couple of things I want to highlight here. One is the reference to Bethel. Now, I know that that term is popular in Christianity today in the circles, but it was associated with occultism back in 
the time of this writing. Uh, it didn't start out that way, but over the years, um, after the temple had been moved to Jerusalem, I believe the temp uh, the tabernacle was in Bethel, um, but I can look that up. There was um, the divided kingdom and some continued to worship in Bethel, but they weren't worshiping the true God. Uh, Beersheba is another case here that was in the, the northern part of the northern kingdom and it was associated with the tribe of Dan, which was also associated with idolatry. So I just want people to be very cognizant and very aware of these antichrist influences, these beast influences here in the church. I mean, they have to tell us what they are just, you know, by the, the rules of the cabal and karma and, you know, things that I don't necessarily understand, but they do present this information right out there for us to see if we have eyes that are discerning, if we are praying over these things. Uh, also, we've got the references down here to Wormwood, which we see with chapter eight of Revelation and the first four trumpets. Uh, also with Orion and the seven stars, which are Pleiades or the Pleiades right over here. Uh, and this is coming up in May. There's going to be a conjunction with Mercury and the sun and the Pleiades. Uh, that would have, you know, just the sun itself would have been enough. But there is some activity going on that may reference this passage. And again, what we are looking at, um, captivity, uh, fire breaking out against the house of Joseph. With Joseph, they were, you know, part Egyptian. There was a lot of that influence uh, in the tribes of Manasseh and Ephraim. And in fact, I mean, Ephraim, that was just an incredible tribe in the book of Jasher, they were, you know, they were ready to have their own exodus and they went out in the desert. They thought that they were just going to buy meat with the money that they had and the shepherds, the other countries, they wouldn't sell it to them. So they wound up going to war. They didn't have any food and they perished. So later when I believe it was Elijah or maybe Elisha, when we hear about the dry bones that come back to life, I really believe that that was the tribe of Ephraim. There were, there were 30,000 men, I believe, who perished that way. I mean, just strong, able, intelligent Hebrew men. So looking at, you know, further judgments here with the book of Amos, these things could happen this year as well. Um, they could happen, you know, every time the sun, you know, once a year as the sun goes through or near these constellations. And let's see. So we had this as May of this year. And we see that here in the stars as well. Orion is right here next to Taurus. And then the Pleiades are in Taurus. So Whole, whole lot of action going on here. And, you know, maybe this is kind of like too much information, drinking from a water, you know, fire hose. I don't know. But all this to say, just stay in prayer and be aware that we are coming into some really hard times, some very hard times, especially, you know, as Dana Coverstone is saying, you know, September and on. All right, well, let's go ahead and close. Lord, please show us incredible things in your word. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23. I know, O Lord, that a man's life is not his own. It is not for man to direct his steps. Correct me, Lord, but only with justice, not in your anger, lest you reduce me to nothing. Pour out your wrath on the nations that do not acknowledge you on the peoples who do not call on your name. For they have devoured Jacob, they have devoured him completely and destroyed his homeland. Uh, chapter 11, verse 18, because the Lord, I'm gonna save that actually. Okay, that might be a personal one, I'm not sure. But it says, because the Lord revealed their plot to me, these are gonna be tough times. 
that actually does coincide with what we are saying is don't just trust people blindly just because they're in leadership. Make sure that you are tied securely to the source. Lord, thank you so much for showing us these things, revealing them to us, dear Lord. Please help us to be salt and light to those around us and just to have that spirit of hope and strength to get through these days in you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. And amen, God bless.